Falchagu Yeo Scott's The Celtic Podcast. Kimra Ha Holodunya, how is everyone? On today's show in Fekimich Beck and Gallic, that's Let's Try Little Gallic. Lesson 22, Somebody Something, Drinking, Saying, and Lay and Lesh. In Celtic history, the Scottish John Rosh, Cherokee Chief. In everyday Celtic ways, it's the Calder Witches. All right, we're going to hear music from Monron, the Barley Shakers, Rankin Family, Dougie McLean, and the Corys. The Annals of the Four Masters and other semi-historical texts of the time place Cormac Mac Art as a long-standing High King of Ireland. They date his reign as 226 to 266 AD, and question if the man is as much legend as historical fact. If you're already a subscriber to the E. Old Scott YouTube channel and enjoy the variety of interesting videos and podcasts that we produce weekly, then you should join us on the E. Old Scott Facebook group. Not only do you get all the great videos you already enjoy, but so much more. Come and connect with your Celtic community here on Ye Old Scott Facebook group. Welcome to Learn a Gallic Song. Today's song is An Elevant by Monron. Now, Donald MacDonald was a North U.S. stonemason, a veteran of the First World War, and a legendary war poet in the Gallic language. He's best known for the song An Ellen Vaughn, The White Swan, which he composed during the Battle of the Somme. And Ellen Vaughn is about a wounded World War I soldier in the trenches who is writing these words to his love, Maggie McLeod. He is uncertain he will even make it, but feels compelled to tell her of his plight, for she is what he is mindful of at this moment. He explains the misery all around him, the death and destruction. He left the island an idealistic young man and changed very quickly with the reality of war. He is reminded of the promise he made to marry her on his return, and that gives him hope even though death surrounds him. The good news is that he does survive, and he does marry Maggie McLeod. Now there's a wonderful interview on BBC Alba about this remarkable man and his song. Just search North U.S. Scotland and Elevon, and they'll take you right to it. All right, remember, Gaelic at the top, English at the bottom. Get ready. <laughs>
Scottish Gaelic is native to the Gales of Scotland. Scottish Gaelic developed out of the Old Irish, and learning this beautiful language can be a direct link to your Gaelic ancestors. Follow along in Fekimich Beckham Gaelic, and like I said, let's try a little Gaelic. Falchagu Ye Old Scots, the Beginner's Gaelic Course. Kimraha Huladunya, how is everyone? Looky there, you already know how to say welcome to and how is everyone. All right, in the next 25 lessons um, of Fekimich Beck and Gaelic, that's Let's Try a Little Gaelic, um, with a little work, you can gain a rudimentary understanding of the Scottish Gaelic language. Now, these lessons were taken from my weekly podcast beginning back on May 15th of 2020. So if you'd like, you can listen to them or there as well. But please remember that I am not an authority on the Gaelic language. I just love learning it. I struggle like most all learners. And so what I teach comes right from well-respected Gaelic teachers. I hope you find it interesting, informative, and fun. And as always, I display on the screen what I'm discussing so you can follow along. All right, Kershmaha, which means, all right then, let's get started. All right, so we're in lesson 22 of that 25-part Gaelic lesson. And it's about somebody or something, some drinking stuff, and some sayings that go along with all that. All right, let's just dive right into the vocabulary then. Uh, we've got the Gaelic and the English, of course. Uh, Kaylee, which is horse of the party. Surly, which is dating. Sorsha which is a type, like Jeshorsha uh, Shishu Ahakavinju. What type of weather do you have? All right. Chanel Le Dunya Sambi. Not with anyone. Dunya Sambi, anyone. Cat Sambi, any cat. It's kind of how you say any of this or any of that. All right. Chanel Misuri Le Dunya Sambi. I'm not dating anyone. That's a good phrase to keep in handy. Root, which means thing. Root sambi, anything. Rootigan. 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 All right, I don't know. I don't know when to roll my R's, and I won't know when not to. So, And if anybody's got that answered, let me know. Rootigan, somebody, eacher, at all. All right, gav, take. Gavel, taking. Gav molashgal. Excuse me. It literally means take my excuse. Jan, which is make or do. A janiv, making or doing. Jeha u a janiv. What are you doing? What are you making? Jok, drink. All right. Ha and jok air. 
he is drunk, or literally it's the drink is on him. Ha and Jock Air Rory. Ha and Jock Air Rory. Rory is drunk. The drink is on Rory. Gashalov Gashalig Gia Orst. It means bless you. That's what you would say for a sneeze. Gashalig Gia Orst. Or, um, na tog me goose and told me. Don't lift me uh, until I fall. Oh, wow. Okay. I guess that means you're really drunk. Nam be ju and j. If only today was yesterday. Fakutikin er mohul. Someone was behind me. Kharo jock er ulum eacher. William was not drunk at all. Jeha dovein a janev. What is your wife doing? All right. I got you a few sentences here to translate, as always. And we'll begin with number one. Je shorsha chok aha u agari. Two. Chanel dunya sambi adol amak anish. Three. Charo le dunya sambi. Four. Avelu suri le dunya sambi. Five. Carson nakel u suri le kutikin. Six. Hamia geri el yo yan haley le hutigan. I wish I was in my love's arms. Wish I was in my love's care. To play ball ponies in me pocket. Rolling round. Round the fair Rosy, Rosy Riley Rosy, Rosy Riley oh. I held Rosy in me arms At the fair Balna slow Balna slow as green and open In the morning coming down Rosy sitting telling fortune Cross me palm with half a crown Rosy, Rosy Riley Rosy, Rosy Riley oh. I held Rosy in me arms At the fair of Oslo I didn't know she had a husband By far a bigger man than me I didn't know he had two brothers Both as big and as bad as he Rosy, Rosy, Riley Rosy, Rosy, Riley, oh I held Rosy in me arms At the fair of Balnes Saw me brothers flinging bottles Saw me da stretched on the ground Saw myself with me head split open Rosy Riley, where are you now? Rosy, Rosy Riley Rosy, Rosy Riley, oh I held Rosy in me arms At the fair Slow. Wish I was in my love's arms Wish I was in my love's care To pie ball ponies in me pocket Rolling round and round the fair Rosy, Rosy Riley Rosy, Rosy Riley oh. I held Rosy in me arms at the fair of the slow Rosy, Rosy Riley Rosy, Rosy Riley, oh 
I held Rosie in me arms at the fair of Balnaslo. Celtic History brings you the tales of the land, castles, warriors, heroes, legends, and customs that have created the rich, vibrant, and sometimes strange and wonderful history of the Celtic world. We're going to talk about a Highlander who came to lead the Cherokee people for almost 40 years. Now, he was uh, seven-eighths of a Highlander, but he gave... Uh, 100% of his heart to Cherokee. John Ross, whose father left Sutherland in the mid-18th century, went on to become a powerful leader of the Cherokee people, whom he served for almost 40 years. John Ross, who, whose father left Sutherland, went on to become a powerful leader of the Cherokee people, played a critical role in protecting the rights of the indigenous people, with him imprisoned and left without a home as he fought against the corruption of forced sales of the Cherokee land which was coveted by the European settlers as prime cotton growing terrain. Now Ross went on to lead his people on the Trail of Tears, a route that spanned thousands of miles from traditional lands inhabited by indigenous populations on the east of the Mississippi including Georgia, Alabama, and Tennessee to a new designated Indian Territory in present-day Oklahoma. Now, the Trail of Tears actually goes through part of Missouri, which where I reside at today. And we got a state park dedicated to it. Now, at least 4,000 Cherokees died on the journey to this unknown western prairie, including Ross's wife, um, Quady, which most were buried in unmarked graves along the way. They weren't allowed to even stop long enough to just bury their, their dead. Ross's campaigning work to improve the route made it safer and easier to survive, and he is credited with saving the lives of many more. Jason Ubich of Tame in District Museum and Kalan Ross Center said that John led the struggle by the Cherokee people against forced and brutal relocation from their homeland in 1838 a story that has many similarities to the clearances in the Highlands being perpetrated at the same time. John's father, Daniel, left Sutherland for America as a young boy with his parents in the 1760s, although the reason for their departure is not entirely clear. But the date is right after Culloden, so that might be a clue to why they left. John Ross was born in 1790 in Turkey Town in Alabama, and his mother, whose father John MacDonald was also Scottish, was one quarter Cherokee. By 1800, the Cherokee Nation was educated and literate, with John growing up bilingual and bicultural as a result. Dr. Ubik said that the Cherokee Nation may not have been quite how you would imagine it. With many being of mixed race, they had embraced formal education, developed a written language, the tribe enjoyed a higher rate of literacy than many of the European settlers, who were putting them under increasing pressure for their land and well-stocked modern farms. Now Ross, who was slightly built, slightly reserved, and who preferred to wear a press suit rather than typical Cherokee dress, was increasingly called to represent the Cherokee Nation in Washington. A landowner himself, he made much of his fortune from a tobacco plantation in Tennessee, which was worked by 20 slaves. Now, from 1819 to 1826, he served as president of the Cherokee National Council, and during this spell, he exposed attempts by federal commissioners to bribe him into approving Cherokee land sales. In 1828, he became principal chief of the entire Cherokee Nation a position he held for almost 40 years until his death in 1866. His defense of Cherokee freedom and property used every means short of war, said Mr. Ubik. Now, the Indian Removal Act of 1830 forced indigenous people from their land with a group of fewer 500 Cherokees signing a treaty which effectively sold their traditional terrain to the, the United States government. 
Ross had gathered 16,000 signatures of Cherokees who opposed it. But President Andrew Jackson pushed the treaty through Congress regardless. What followed was the Trail of Tears where the death marches of Native Americans exposed them to disease, violence, starvation, and of course the elements. Now although Ross's life was devoted to the Cherokee, his Scottish heritage continued to resonate. In 1847, he helped to arrange a Cherokee fundraiser for those suffering from famine in the Highlands. And what, he sent $190 to New York Bank for the cause. All right, so he didn't forget his roots. And he's a great man for coming here and seeing the cause and, and acting and working to do, make better things for the indigenous peoples. All right. I hope you liked that little story today. I would uh, encourage you to look up more about John Ross and the Cherokee Highlander. It's, it's a really cool story. All right. Enjoy. Scots Wahi, we Wallace bled. Scots Wan Bruce has often led. Welcome to your gory bed, or to victory. Now the day and now's the hour see the front oh battle hour. see approach proud Edward's power chains and slavery war will be Traitor name, walk and fell, coward's grave, was a base as be a slave, let him turn and flee. War for Scotland's king. And Lord, freedom's sword will strongly draw. Free man stand or free man fall. Let him fall. Servile chains We will drain Our dearest veins But they shall be free 
Lay the pride Use our purse low Tyrants fall In every fold Liberties In every blow Let us do our deed Scots Wahe We Wallace bled Scots Wambrus has often led Welcome to your gory bed Or to victory Now's the day And now's the hour See the front Oh, battle hour, see approach proud Edward's power, chains and slavery. Everyday Celtic Ways brings you the mythology, traditions, and customs that have created a unique and personal culture that still affects those that are Celtic and those that just love the Celtic world. This week on Weird Scotland, a lunar helping hand. The farm of Turney Moon was said to be the place where every 28 days the colder witches meant to turn the moon by hand because they feared that the switch to the Gregorian calendar in 1582 had confused the moon and the witches were worried that it might disappear from the night sky forever. Those witches really cared about their communities back then, you know what Aww. I mean? <laughs> now the name of the farm near West Calder is actually derived from Tor Namoin, Gallic for Hill of the Peat Bog. I always prefer the folksy entomologies. In reality, this group of smugglers used the fear of these witches to keep prying eyes from their illegal activities, says a local historian. And all these witches were doing was running out to the peat to have their little dance naked in the moonlight kind of thing. All right. Yeah. 
Love of Harrison. Now remember to check out my YouTube channel. It's got Celtic music, podcasts, Gallic language, Gallic song, Celtic history videos, plus lots more. And my Facebook group where you can give me your inputs and insights on all things Celtic. Goodbye, Apple Baby. Marsha Weave. But I'm going to let you go with a song. There's a wee thing, especially for you older members of the audience, who've got your families all grown up working, but they're still staying at home with you. And we actually are going to tell you a story we got from a man in a pub we met last week. Now, we went into this pub, and you can always tell the husband who's going through this stage because he's standing there on his own. He's been forced out again. Oh, Standing there with his elbows on the bar, and, and he's, he's got the haggard look with the big bags under the eyes. Oh, yes, the hair's all over the place, the bowed shoulders, and a far... You can always tell him he's got a double whiskey in that hand, and a, a pint of heavy in that hand. He just doesn't know where the hell to start. You know what I mean? <laughs> Anyway, what we're going to do is tell you his story exactly as he told it to us that night. You ready, man? So I went up to the bar. I said, Reg, give me a whiskey and I'll join this man. I went up to him and said, here, you look off his sand. What's your problem? He says, oh, he says, it's the kiss. He says, you know, as I stand over here in the bar with a beer and I think on the years of my life, I was never a fool. I did quite well at school then. There was college, a job, and a wife. Now, when the children came along, life was really a song. There were good kids, as far as I could see. But now that they're grown, they treat the house as their own. And there's two of them bigger than me. And he sang. Has certainly changed Where the kids and the stereo play Where seldom is heard an intelligent word Cause the radio's blaring all day nice to be among kindred spirits. <laughs> I said, you know, it can't be that bad. He says, it is. He had a wee sippy whiskey. He said, you know, the kids, they sit in my seat and they tap me for cash and it seems that the phone's never free. There's dirty cups on the carpet and half full mugs in the hall and there's crumbs where the biscuits should be. They've got their top of the pops and the old grey whistle test, the Chinese detective and David Soul. I can't stand fame, I don't know who's to blame, I just don't have the remotest control. And he sang, Home oh, has certain Try it, change. Like, where the kids in the stereo play. Where the kids and the stereo play. Where seldom is heard. Where seldom is an intelligent word inter- Cause the radio blaring all day Oh, so sad <laughs> Says, what 
with her personalised stereos and rings in boys' ears, leather jackets and bright coloured hair. I'd like to escape, get out for a wee run, but the big lad has borrowed my car. They've just had their friends in. There were quite a few there, and the hi-fi so loud I can't think. They've finished the coffee, and we've run out of tea, and they've had more whiskey, so I can't take the drink. No. Oh, has certainly changed. Where the kids and the stereo play. Where the kids and the stereo Where someone is heard. does have its compensations because he downed his whiskey and he finished his pint. A twinkle came back in his eye. He stood back from the bar, he squared his shoulders and he said, you know, as I stand over here in the bar with my beer between strangers and a loud space machine, it's becoming quite clear I'm not being fair when I think how the kids could have been. Oh, yeah. Cos they do clean out the car and they work hard at their jobs. They cut the grass and they help with the tea. Oh, you know, really, I'm lucky. Cos they're fit and they're well and they're home where we all want to be. And then he changed his song and he sang. Oh, home has suddenly changed. Where the kids and the stereo. 